تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب Welcome to another episode of Islam 101. In my previous episode, I talked about the fact that the message that all the prophets brought to mankind was to worship the one God Allah. You might have asked yourself, who is Allah and what are his, his attributes? I hope to address some of these questions in today's episode. Since the Quran is the direct word of Allah, I thought to myself, why not let Allah talk about himself regarding his attributes? Therefore, a majority of today's episode will be the verse of the Quran where Allah is talking about himself and his attributes. The word Allah is God translated in Arabic. The word Allah is not only used by the Muslims, but is also used by the Christian and Jewish Arabs. In fact, the word Allah can be found in multiple places in the Arabic Bible. Though the word Allah means God in Arabic, it has certain advantages over its English counterpart. In English, God is subject to plurality, for example, God and gods, and is also subject to gender, for example, God and goddess. But Allah in Arabic is neither subject to plurality or gender. Allah is the personal name of God, and we do not use it for anything else. But this is not the only name of Allah. The following verse addresses this issue further. The core belief in Islam is that Muslims have to believe in the oneness of Allah and not ascribe any partners with him. The following verse talks about this issue further. Allah is eternal and everlasting and is different from his creation. Therefore, Islam completely rejects any depiction of Allah or characterizing him in any human form. The following verse talks about this issue further. Muslims are not supposed to pray to anyone except Allah. When we repent, we repent to Allah only, as He is the one who forgives us. Allah forgives any sin except those who die disbelieving in Allah. The concept that God rested on the seventh day of creation, or that God fought with one of His soldiers, or that God is an envious plotter against mankind, or even that God is incarnate in any human being is blasphemous from an Islamic point of view. Allah is in complete control of our affairs. This does not negate free will, but in fact it implies that since Allah is the most knowledgeable, He knows from beforehand the choices we will make. The Prophet, peace be upon him, further emphasized this when he said that if the whole of mankind gathered to harm you, they would not be able to harm you except with what Allah had already written for you. And if the whole of mankind gathered to help you, they would not be able to help you except with what Allah had already written for you. Let me end with the following two verses of the Quran which emphasize Allah and His attributes further. Allah 